If you're looking to run Google ads for your auto tinting shop, one of the first things you're gonna to need to do is find your keywords. So I'm gonna go over how to find those keywords, the types of keywords you wanna find, and then a couple other things that are gonna be really, really helpful for your campaign. So if you're new here, my name is Chris. I talk about all things Google ads. And if you find this kind of content valuable, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you are the owner of a tint shop looking for some help with this, there is a link in the description for a free consultation. So there's really a couple of things you're going to need before we get going. Number one, obviously you're going to need a Google ads account. If you don't have one set up already, go to ads.google.com. You can set up a Google ads account really easily. And number two, you're just going to want to have a spreadsheet open. I tend to use Google drive. So you can just use Google sheets. If you want to use Excel, you can use Excel, but you're just going to need those two things before we get started. And then once you have those things, we can get going before we actually start getting those keywords together. You want to understand how Google ads campaigns are typically structured. What you're going to do is as you're gathering keywords, you're going to find different keyword themes and you're going to group those themes into what are called ad groups. So you can see I have these different ad groups here and within each one of these ad groups, there are different keywords. So everything within the window tint ad group, are window tinting keywords. Everything within the auto tint ad groups are auto tinting keywords. Everything in this geo ad group are dealing with that specific geographic location, et cetera, et cetera. So if you also offer residential tinting, commercial tinting, that kind of stuff, you would have different ad groups for those specific keywords. So when you're gathering the keywords, we're going to be dropping them into our spreadsheet in these ad groups so we can kind of keep things organized as we go. All right. So in order to actually start finding the keywords we want to bid on, you want to log into your Google ads account by just going to ads.google.com signing in. And then once you are um, on your homepage, you should see up at the top of the page, there'll be a little wrench. And then you just want to click on this link that says keyword planner. So after you click on that, you're going to see a page that should look something like this. Google might update this at some point but you should have the option here to hit discover new keywords. And you just want to type in a few of the primary keywords. So for me, I'm just going to type in uh, window tinting near me, auto window tinting, and then maybe we'll just do uh, tint shops near me. Just hit get results. And then it's going to take you to a page that looks like this. So you should have some keyword ideas right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow down the geographic uh, location that it's searching in right now. It's selecting the entire United States. Just click on this and I'm just going to do Dallas for our example today. And you can pretty much select whatever else you want. If you want to do a, a smaller area, a larger area, um, I just kind of select a general area to get an idea, a rough idea of what, uh, search volume is like. Now, one thing to keep in mind is take these numbers with a grain of salt. They're never hundred percent accurate. The same thing with these, uh, uh, bid estimates right here. They're almost never hundred percent accurate. So take it all with a grain of salt. So when we are actually looking for keywords, what we really want to do is make sure that we're prioritizing what are called high intent keywords. These are keywords that are, um, essentially people looking to actually purchase something. They're actually looking to, um, they're further down that buying funnel as opposed to just shopping for, you know, something really broad, like just window tinting or tint films or something like that. If somebody's looking for tint films, they're probably not looking to go to a shop to get their car tinted or, you know, have their businesses, windows tinted, whatever it might be. So we want to keep the focus on those high intent keywords. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this list and we're going to pull these high intent keywords out and then we're going to start organizing them into our spreadsheet. So really what we want to do is we want to start going down this list, make sure you have your spreadsheet open and I'm going to start pulling out high intent keywords that I want to add into my campaign. One thing that's really good window tinting near me. Now with this keyword, just keep an eye on it because obviously sometimes it might uh, somebody looking for residential or commercial window tinting might search that. And if you only do auto window tinting, you want to make sure in your ads, you're only talking about auto window tinting. So I still pull it. It still works pretty well. So pull that keyword and you just drop it into your spreadsheet like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep going down here, auto window tinting. So going back to the idea of ad groups, we want to make sure that we split these out into their own categories. So window tinting and window tinting keywords should be their own category. I'm going to start another category that's specifically auto window tinting keywords, tint shops. I would put that in its own category just because you can make the ads a little bit more specific to those keywords. So you just start going down the list here and you can start pulling these keyword ideas 
and then just drop them into their relevant categories like this car window tinting. Now, technically you could drop this under auto window tinting, but I would probably take car window tinting, put it in its own ad group as well. Because again, within each one of those ad groups, you can make ads that are specific to those keywords. And the more specific those ads are to those keywords, the better everything's gonna perform. So continuing on, car tint near me, that's good. Car tint, so something like this, you could test it out if you were to bid on a keyword like this. We'll talk about match types in a minute, but I would suggest only going exact match on this because it's a little bit broad. I really like keywords like this that have like a near me or it's, you know, the location or something like that. If it's just, you know, car tint or window tint, it might work, but it might also just be somebody looking for a product. But going down the list, car window tinting could be good. I would probably drop that in anyway. Not near me. We can get rid of that. And what you're going to do, I'm not going to go through this entire list because this video would probably take an hour. But what you want to do is if you do mobile, for example, you can add that in. Or if you're not mobile, we'll talk about negative keywords in a second. You can get rid of mobile as a keyword. So continuing on auto window tinting near me. That's another good keyword. Drop that into the auto window tinting ad groups. You can kind of see the ad groups are starting to take shape. Um, and what you're going to do is just keep going through this list and you don't have to have hundreds and hundreds of keywords. Just keep going through the list, finding good keywords and then adding them into your spreadsheet so you can start building out those ad groups and kind of finishing up your keyword research. I'm going to pause this video, select a few more keywords, and I'll come back in a minute. We'll talk about match types and negative keywords as well. All right, so I've gone ahead. I've put together a handful of keywords here. This is obviously uh, not what a full campaign would look like because I didn't want to spend an hour going through the entire list. But like I said, you just want to keep going through that list, continue to build out your keyword list. You're going to find a ton of different ideas in there. And again, just organize them into your ad groups like this. But the next thing that we want to talk about are match types. So what you don't want to do is just take these keywords and then just copy and paste them into your campaign because you're going to be pasting them in as broad match keywords, which you don't really want to do. They can work, but you want to use what are called phrase and exact match keywords. So Google has a helpful article on it right here. Uh, the definitions on it have changed over the years, but they give a pretty good description right here. So I only use phrase and exact match on my campaigns and they have a couple examples right here with the little brackets or the quotes in the brackets. And this is what it would look like, you know, with uh, uh, tinting keywords. So if you just have no modifiers on the keyword like this, it's going to be considered a broad match and a broad match keyword will show for pretty much anything related to window tinting. So they have a, an example here. If you bid on the broad match keyword, low carb diet plan, it could show for all these different kinds of things, Mediterranean diet books, low carb diets, carb free foods. So it's, it can just go wild with it. So I advise stay away from broad match unless you have a massive negative keyword list because broad match can just show your ads for window tinting films, stores, auto parts stores, products, just anything you can imagine they're going to show your ads for. Um, phrase match, on the other hand, is a little bit tighter. So the way you want to look at these nowadays is how broad are you willing to let Google go in terms of what you want to bid on? So phrase match, it's more of a suggestion. So right here, they say ads may show on the searches that include the meaning of your keyword. So it's kind of just more of a suggestion, if you will. And then exact match is much more tight with what they're what you're allowing Google to show your ads for. So they have some other examples here. Uh, phrase match, you could say, hey, I want to bid on the keyword tennis shoes, but they could also show it for shoes for tennis, buy tennis shoes on sale, red tennis shoes, comfortable tennis sneakers. So it's a lot of, um, you know, much more broad, uh, if you will. So um, past that exact match, shoes for men, shoes, men, men, shoes, men shoe shoes for a man etc like it kind of it's a little bit tighter so my recommendation is obviously don't just take those keywords and then just copy and paste them in make sure you put them in an, in as either phrase match or exact match or what you can do is you can take all of these and then have one version of each keyword as a phrase match and one as an exact match and that works as well you can see which one works better 
and then go with whichever ones work better. So that's match types. Now, the next thing we got to talk about really quick are negative keywords and understanding the importance of those. So before we finish up, no keyword list is complete without the addition of negative keywords. So what a negative keyword is, it is essentially the opposite of a keyword. So you can do all this keyword research, but if you don't add in negative keywords, your ads are still going to show for some irrelevant stuff. They could show for competitor brand names. They could show for products. They could show for stores. They could show for a lot of different things. And the way we get rid of all that is with negative keywords. So usually what I do is I just create another tab on my sheet for negative keywords. And it's a very similar process to getting your actual keywords that you're bidding on. The first thing I usually do, especially if I'm getting into any kind of new niches, I go through this keyword research tool and I find negative keywords that I don't want to show up for. So examples like this, if you have somebody that's looking specifically for $100 window tinting near me, I would literally just take $100. I'd add it as a negative. Um, if you are not mobile, so you could take the keyword mobile, drop that in, then your ads won't show for somebody looking for mobile window tinting. Um, for example, also, if you don't do residential, you can take residential, add that in there. If you don't do again, house, that's another variation. Take that, add that in there. If you don't offer ceramic window tinting, you can exclude that. Here's another price example. You can get rid of 99, get rid of that. And you kind of see it's very similar to the keywords. It's just in the opposite. You just want to go through this find as many things as you can find that you don't want your ads to show for and then add them into that list. And I would recommend spending as much time as on this as you did researching keywords. Like this is super, super important because if somebody searches for something irrelevant or they're searching for a product or something and they still click on your ad, you're gonna get charged. So the Google doesn't care if it was an irrelevant search term, you wanna make sure you weed those out. So go through the keyword planner. A couple other things you wanna do. Go through your local market, find all your competitors, and then add their brand names in as negatives. Another thing you can do is look up, um, if you just go to Google and then look up common negative keywords for Google ads or something like that, there's a ton of keywords like free, uh, discount, sale, uh, employment, careers, all that kind of stuff, uh, hiring, You know, people looking for jobs. You wanna exclude all of that. And then on top of that, you can, um, you know, exclude big brands. So, you know, products, uh, tint, you know, tint brands. So like the actual manufacturers of the tint, uh, auto parts, stores, all that kind of stuff, national brands, add those into your negative keyword list because that's going to eliminate waste. The less waste we can have on a Google ads account, the better, because that's going to mean that you are getting more results out of the keywords that you're actually bidding on. All right, so that is keyword research in a nutshell for auto tinting. If you take the time, find the right keywords, build that negative keyword list, definitely do not skimp out on the negative keyword list. Make sure you drop those keywords in with the right match types and keep them organized in your ad groups. You should have no problem generating good traffic for your auto tinting shop. Now, this is obviously just one part of a bigger puzzle. When it comes to Google ads, I do have much more in-depth tutorials on my channel. I'll leave some links in the description for those below. But if you did find this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more. And if you are the owner of an auto tint shop, there's a link in the description below for a free consultation. If you fill that out, I can see if I can help you out and I'll reach out to you if I can. But in the meantime, I hope you found the video helpful and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.